Okay, good morning or good afternoon, Echo Glen students. My name is Miss Dewey. I am a teacher at Echo Glen, and this is going to be writing class. So I'm going to get started on the lesson. I will be sharing my screen, and we're going to get going. Okay, Miss Dewey's writing class, lesson five, 2020, Echo Glen School pandemic version. Here's the basics. What's going on today? What do I need to have to participate? So I've said this quite a few times now, but due to COVID-19 pandemic and the closing of Washington State schools until the end of this academic year, Issaquah and Echo Glen have moved to an online learning platform. In writing class, we will be working on various aspects of writing. So you need to have a pencil and a paper. You'll also need to have a willingness to learn and to persevere and to grow. And be patient with me, mostly, because I have a lot of technical difficulties. So part two of the warm-up. In the beginning of each class, we will perform an English language arts warm-up. The warm-ups consist of step one, figurative and literary devices, homophones and spelling. Step two, application of figurative and literary devices, editing, defining grammatical terms. Step three, application of said grammatical term, vocabulary practice, and spelling practice. And step four, using vocabulary in context editing Greek and Latin roots. So I need you to go get that piece of paper or hopefully it has been handed out to you by now and a pencil. And I want you to write your name and cottage at the top, the date that you access this video, the class and lesson number. This is writing class. This is lesson number five and the question set number. We are back to the beginning. So it is question set number one. Here we go. Do the best that you can. Some of you may already know the answers. This can either be reviewed or new learned information. So, number one, define the word metaphor. Metaphor. Don't give me the example of a metaphor. Give me a definition. Number two, write the sentence with the correct answer. Are you coming to two or two, the party on Saturday. So which two is the correct answer? Write the entire sentence with the correct two. And write the word that is spelled correctly. The word is acceptable. Which one is the correct spelling? I will come back, don't worry. So I'm gonna take two or three minutes to complete your answers. We're gonna come back to the screen. And if the staff member could pause, that would be great. So define metaphor, write the correct sentence using the correct to, and write out the correct spelling of the word acceptable. I will pause here. And if somebody could pause the video for two to three minutes and let everybody do their, write their answers out. Okay, moving on. Hopefully you've had enough time to write down your answers. If you have not, please raise your hand and let somebody in the room know so the video can be paused again before we move on to the answer. Here we go. Let's see how you did. Define metaphor, a comparison without using the words like or as. I, want you, I wanted you to write out the sentence, are you coming to T-O, the party on Saturday? And I wanted you to write out the correct spelling of the word acceptable. And it is A-C-C-E-P-T-A-E-L-E. -E -E. So in this section, in examples and explanations, I'll go over some of the um, some of the answers more in depth. Usually not the spelling, unless there's a reason to. And we will do a little more in-depth knowledge about some of the answers. So the first one, metaphor, comparison between two things without, without using the words like or as. So metaphor example, all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players by William Shakespeare. And another one is conscience is a man's compass by Vincent van Gogh. 
So a metaphor, and they are used in songs and poems quite often. So this is from Marshmallow featuring Bastille, which is happier. And the lyrics are, when the morning comes, when we see what we've become, in the cold light of day, we're a flame in the wind, not with the fire that we've begun. So the metaphor is, in the cold light of day, we're a flame in the wind, not the fire that we've begun. So what does it mean? So this song is about a romantic relationship between two people that has recently gone downhill. The writer uses the metaphor of a flame in the wind to describe the current state of their deteriorating relationship. In the next line, the writer states that their relationship used to be a fire, expressing that their relationship is not what it used to be. So we're the romantic relationship of flame in the wind. So our relationship is a flame in the wind, not the fire that we started out at. Okay, so the homophone definition is one or two or more words pronounced alike, but different in meaning or origin or spelling. So we're gonna watch a video from the Khan Academy about the two, two, and two frequently confused words. Hello, grammarians. Today, we're gonna to talk about the confusion that happens between these three homophones, these three words that sound exactly the same. The preposition to, the number to, and the adverb to. Now, these words all sound very similar. In fact, they sound exactly the same. If I were going to write this out phonetically, here's what I would do. That's how you'd write it in the International Phonetic Alphabet for every pronunciation. You say that word, two. You say that word, two. You say that word, two. If you were looking this up in a dictionary, that's how you would render this spelling phonetically. That's the sound of those words. They all sound exactly the same. So what we need to do is come up with a way to keep them all separate. Um, and the way I'm going to do that is with the Prince of Foods, the pizza. Let's just call that a pizza. Now, to, T-O, is a preposition. Uh, and so that means that it's expressing some kind of relationship in time and space. In this case, we can say one of its many, many meanings is that it means it's moving towards something. So, for example, I am headed to Frank Serrazano's Pizzeria. Right, so we can see in context, this is intentional, it's in motion, and that's why we'd want to use a preposition. Where am I going? To Frank Serrazano's Pizzeria. Next, T-W-O, also pronounced to, you're welcome, is a number. It's this thing. So we'd use this mostly as an adjective to describe how many things there are. So I would say, at the pizzeria, I ordered two pizzas and ate them by myself. Right, so when we're talking about the number of things, you want to use T-W-O. And finally, we have T-O-O, two, which is an adverb. And it can either mean uh, an overabundance of something or also. So let me give you examples for both of those cases. Uh, so example case number one, the excessive amount. I ate too much pizza. I feel awful. Now some of you may take issue with that because you don't believe that there is such a thing as too much pizza. I understand. So that's, that's our excessive amount. That's, that's just, you know, mountains and mountains of pizza. More than one person can or should reasonably eat. That's, that's that definition. And then there is the in addition or also meaning. So my sister wanted pizza too, but because of my greed, she did not get any. Sorry, Julie, oh, I made her cry. Oh. So in order to keep these three very similar sounding words straight, here's what you need to remember. To, T-O, is a preposition that means towards something. I am headed to Frank Serrazano's Pizzeria. T-W-O, the number two, is a number, so you'd say I ordered two pizzas. Finally, T-O-O, -O, the adverb, means either there's an overabundance, there's too much, or in addition, my sister wanted pizza too. So grammarians, I say unto you, remember the pizza. You can learn anything, David out. Have fun. 
Okay. Here we go. Um, so two, two, and two. Just what the Khan, the Khan Academy video just went over. TO is a preposition of movement. I will take a taxi to the airport. Also can refer to an endpoint of a time period, 9 to 5. Um, getting or receiving something. Can you give my keys to Jack? So again, thinking of movement. Used to show change of state, condition or quality. So the traffic lights change from red to green. TOO, more than desirable. So the shirt is too big for me or he's driving too fast. Refers to an excessive amount of something, like I ate too much pizza. Also, I was tired and my friend was too. So in addition, so we were both tired. And TWO is the number. I can speak two languages. So hopefully some of that cleared up between the video and this, what the TO and the TOO and the TWO, how they are different. Okay, we are going to stop there. And we're gonna come back to part B and do parts of speech. And this week we're doing pronouns. Okay, lesson five, part B coming right up. <laughs>